Hey, this is Mrs. Reichelt, and today we're starting our anatomy and physiology uh, class. Let's see, the first couple of things we have to go through before we can really get into body systems is talking about what are the differences between anatomy and physiology. So anatomy is really the study of structure. So the body structures, what their names are, physiology is going to be how each of those structures work. So we'll say the function. Okay, so anatomy is the structure, physiology then is the function. Um, there's a couple of terminology that we're going to go through here. The first is gross anatomy. Gross anatomy does not mean yucky or gross anatomy. Um, it means that it's going to be large and easily observable things. Okay, so this would be when we study gross anatomy, we're going to be looking at the skeletal system, all of the bone names, so we can see each of those without a microscope. The other type of anatomy we'll talk about is microscopic anatomy. Just as the name implies, microscope is going to be um, small, not easily observable. You need a microscope to see them. Um, all right, next up, let's go through the structural classification of organisms. So structural classifications. And if you remember these from biology, don't feel the need to write them down. Um, we're just going to go through them very quickly here. So the first up is the chemical level. In biology, you probably didn't add that as your first grouping, but chemical level, um, we can even be more specific and say atoms, they're going to be the building blocks of matter. Okay, um, From there, we have the cell. The cell is the basic unit of structure and function in, or in an organism. Then there are several cells that work together, therefore making a tissue. Okay, tissues are groups of cells that have the, a similar function. Then we have an organ. An organ is going to be two or more tissue types that are working together for a specific function. And then last is the organ system. Organ systems are going to be groups of organs um, working together to accomplish um, a common purpose. If you remember those, don't feel the need to write them down, but you will need to be able to differentiate between each of those um, structural classification levels. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and start um, our quick little review of all of the body systems. It's important to know that each of these systems has their own chapter, so we'll go through these in greater detail, but this is just the overview. So the first up is the integumentary system. Okay, This makes up the skin. Um, it's going to form the, an external body covering, as it says right here, um, will protect deeper tissue from injury. Um, in addition, some other things that aren't here, it's also going to help regulate body temperature. And then the last one's written here, so I'm not going to write it again. Um, it's a location for cutaneous receptors. Okay, so uh, that really wraps up the integumentary system. The things to take away um, forms the external body covering um, and protects deeper tissue and regulates body temperature. The skeletal system um, is made up of cartilage, joints, bones. Um, these, I'm, it's very handy that they're already written, protects and supports body organs. That's a big one here. Um, provides for muscle attachment. Let's see, I better write that one. A site for muscle attachment. Okay. In addition, it's going to be um, a site of blood cell formation. Blood cell formation is also called hematopoiesis. 
So that is H E M A T O P O I E S I S. That's kind of a hard one. So hematopoiesis is um, blood cell formation. Um, in addition, the skeletal system is also going to store minerals, and it's already written down here. Okay, next up we're moving into the muscular system. So the muscular system, um, I think pretty obvious, it's going to be all of their, the skeletal muscles. Okay, um, the muscular system is going to provide for locomotion, maintains posture, and produces heat. So those are the three major things to take away from the muscular system. And skeletal muscles is what that is comprised of. The nervous system is made up of the brain, sensory receptors, spinal cord, and nerves. Uh, the nervous system is a fast-acting control system of the body. Um, all of these actually are good things to write down. The nervous system responds to internal and external changes by activating appropriate muscles and glands. So for example, um, an internal change might be the amount of oxygen or we could say or carbon dioxide levels. That could be an internal change. An external change would be something like um, light. Your eyes um, are going to adjust in the presence of lightness or darkness. Temperature would be another one, sound. So make sure you can um, differentiate between internal and external changes. Internal is going to be anything that's happening inside of your body. External is going to be anything that's happening outside of the body. Um, in addition, okay, I guess we talked about muscles and glands as well. Let's see here. All right, so the endocrine system um, makes up the pineal gland, the pituitary gland, the thyroid gland, um, parathyroid glands, um, the thymus gland, the adrenal gland, pancreas, the testes, the ovary, um, the major functions of the endocrine systems is that it's going to secrete hormones that regulate processes such as growth, reproduction, uh, metabolism. Each of those. Let's make sure I'm covering everything. All right. Moving right along, the cardiovascular system. Um, cardiovascular system is going to be the heart and blood vessels. We're actually going to lump the cardiovascular system in with the respiratory system because they work so closely together. So we'll talk about each, um, the cardiovascular and respiratory together. But for now, let's keep them very separate. Um, so cardiovascular, um, major function is to transport blood and other nutrients. Okay, so blood is going to carry oxygen to the um, capillary beds and to your cells. Carbon dioxide is going to be leaving or exiting your capillary beds and going back out. Um, let's see, nutrients, waste, and the heart, the major function of the heart is to pump blood. Um, let's see here. The next one is the lymphatic system. So the lymphatic system is going to contain lymphatic vessels, lymph nodes, I guess they're written right here, uh, the spleen, which is in, in here, I better write that in, the spleen, um, we have your tonsils are included here. Um, and the major function of the lymphatic system, sort of like a delivery system, it delivers um, anything, any lost fluid in your um, body back to your blood or back to the heart. So this is going to pick up fluid that's leaked from blood vessels and returns it back to blood. Um, a great thing about the lymphatic system is it's going to actually filter some of that as well. Um, Let's see. 
Okay, I guess we're not quite done here. Okay, so in addition, um, the lymphatic system is going to return um, fluids back to the blood. Also, it's going to be involved in immunity or your defense system. Okay, the respiratory system. Respiratory system um, made up of the nasal cavity, the pharynx, the larynx, the trachea, the bronchus, and the well, this says left lung, it just the lungs in general. Um, the major purpose of the respiratory system is to keep the blood constantly supplied with oxygen and to remove carbon dioxide. And the digestive system is in oral cavity. Um, it's purpose is to break down food stuff into smaller materials so the body can absorb it and get the nutrient values from it. So we start with the oral cavity. We have the esophagus, the stomach, the small intestine, the large intestine, the rectum, and the anus. Um, there are several other accessory organs involved. Um, let's see, we can go through some of them. Um, your teeth are an accessory organ, the liver, the spleen. We'll talk about each of these um, a little bit later. Um, for this first chapter, you just really need to know the, the major organs that are involved or the major structures involved. Um, and again, the digestive system is going to break down food into absorbable, um, into anything that you can absorb. Uh, let's see here. In addition, it gets rid of the indigestible food stuff that's eliminated as feces. Then we're almost done here. The urinary system um, is made up of the kidneys, the ureter, the urinary bladder, and the urethra. Um, I should probably put a different picture, a male picture in addition here. Um, so this is obviously a female. You have the kidneys, the ureter, the bladder and the urethra. Notice that the urethra in a female is very short. The urethra in a male is much longer. Um, the major function of the urinary system is to eliminate nitrogenous waste from the body. This also regulates um, water, electrolyte, and acid-base balance of the blood. Then we get to our very last system. Um, we have the reproductive system. So for the male here, we have the prostate gland, seminal vesicles, the penis, the vas deferens, the testes, and the scrotum. Um, the overall function of the reproductive system is to produce offspring. In the female, we have um, the major organs. You have the mammary glands in um, breasts, the uterine tubes. Sometimes those are called fallopian tubes. It's the same thing. Uh, then you have ovaries, the uterus, and the vagina. And again, the overall function of the reproductive system is to produce offspring. Uh, so that wraps up the each of the 11 body systems in a very quick sort of way. The rest of the year, we're actually going to focus on each of those very slowly. So I hope that helps, and you can continue watching the rest of the Chapter 1 videos.